This section of the setup guide will cover connection issues and how to go about troubleshooting those. So I've adjusted my network config to be incorrect, but um, I will try to connect and I should get an error here. But what's important is that the network config save file, as in this option here to edit the save file, will not be needed. The save file should work in most instances, and it's very, very uncommon that the save file is the source of the issue. The issue will stem from the PCSX2 network config, not the config for the game. And there is not a lot of times you would ever need to edit this, and editing it can make troubleshooting more difficult, because settings in here can cause huge problems if they're done incorrectly. I'm going to go and I'm going to try to connect. And this check should fail. And for the purposes of troubleshooting, once it does fail, I'll show how to redo the check and how to change the settings to try and figure out what works in your own computer and what your own system will be looking for in order to make the connection to the Mailgun Online 1 server. So as you can see, it's taken like about 20 seconds for it to actually check and look for the server and it's still not connecting. This is the sort of first indication that something isn't working if it's taking this long, because it does take quite a time for the actual check the timeout. I'm just waiting for the error message to pop up. Okay, so it's obvious this isn't going to work. I'm just going to cancel the network check. So I'm going to hit X to abort. So it'll return you back to this screen once the check fails or you abort it. While this screen is open, you can open the network and HDD menu and you can change your Ethernet settings. So I'm going to change it to sockets and then going to change it to Ethernet. And then I'm going to close this menu. And I'm going to retry the check. And you can do this while the emulator is still open and retry that check. And if you get a firewall pop up, you can just allow through the firewall. So I can see how I was able to change the network config as the game was open. That's the most efficient and quickest way to troubleshoot network connections is to change your network and HDD settings as the game is open on that specific screen. And the most reliable settings that get connected is using sockets and the Ethernet device which your system is using. And how you can check that is you would right click on your, assuming you're using Windows, is you'd right click on your network settings down here and you'd open network and internet settings and your current uh, adapter will be shown here on this screen. This will tell you what you're using. If you want to confirm what other adapters your system is using you can hit on change adapter options and it'll give you a full list of what is on your system. And you can see here that Ethernet 1 is in use because it's not got an X on it but uh, I wouldn't recommend using this screen unless you're a more experienced Windows user. I would just go by what this screen would say, because it says Ethernet and it says Ethernet Private Network. This will give you a good indication of which uh, device you want to select in the Network Device menu. If you wish to host, you'll have to use the PCAP Bridged option. And a, if you don't have PCAP Bridge or PCAP Switch as options in this menu, then you'll need to install the PCAP software, which I have also linked in the video description. So, on the subject of hosting, this specific pop-up is cannot create a game in the current network environment. This pretty much tells you that the game isn't port forwarded or doesn't have a IP that it can host from, but you're still able to connect to lobbies and play the game. If you get as far as this terms and conditions page, you've connected to the server. So once this music starts playing, that is your golden ticket that you're in and don't need to worry. So I'm going to disconnect from the network and I'm going to go over just how different it looks when you're able to host. So if I select detailed settings, I hit connect the network and I get it to the point where it wants to load the save file, I'm going to change my uh, network and HDD settings. I'm going to enable PCAP bridged. I'm going to enable intercept DHCP 
I'm going to make sure the Ethernet device matches the one my system wants to use. Now, this IP address in the PS2 address section, so PSSX2 doesn't use the IP address of your system. It actually runs as a type of virtual machine where it kind of has a virtual PlayStation 2 of its own individual IP address running inside your computer. And unlike other games and other services, you'll need to actually port forward the virtual machine itself. The IP you set here in this menu, which I have automatically set to 0 0.200, is the IP address you'll need to port forward in your router settings. And you also make, want to make sure that your port settings match the port settings that you set earlier. And I'm just going to navigate to that menu here just to show you exactly how to get there if you need to ever check it. So I'm going to hit yes in this connection. Just to show you that whenever you connect like this, that the pop-up telling you you can't host will not appear. And if you don't see that pop-up, that's pretty much the indication that you're good to host. Because you see that now we didn't get the red pop-up saying you're not able to host. So I'm going to disconnect from the network. I'm going to just go back to the port selection menu. So I'm going to hit play of detailed settings. I'm going to go to network settings. And this is the port you'll want to port forward for the purposes of hosting. Now, you will have to port forward for the UDP protocol. On most routers, you either have you have three options, which is all protocols, TCP, and UDP. Melgar Online One uses the UDP protocol, and that's what you'd need to port forward to be able to host games. That will cover the troubleshooting, but just as a quick summary, you will want to edit the network and HDD section to basically match what your computer itself uses to connect to the internet, which will be your Ethernet device. And your Ethernet device type will basically depend on whether you want to host or not host. If you want to host, you'll need to use Bridge, and if you do not wish to host, or you're not able to connect at all and wish to troubleshoot, I would use the sockets option. The intercept DHCP uh, check will only need to be enabled if you wish to host. If you don't wish to host, you can turn that setting off. With that, uh, that concludes the troubleshooting. There are some other issues you may run into, such as if the game fails to load during the DNAS check, that would indicate that your cheat file isn't working. If you feel the UDP check, it may be an issue with connecting to the server itself, like there might be a firewall issue, you might be blocked by your ISP, or there might be some other network issue where a firewall or some sort of antivirus program is blocking the connection. So be sure to check that there's not a piece of third-party antivirus software running that might block you. Examples of ones which can be really uh, bad for this is Avast, Avira, and McAfee. They're known to really block a lot of programs and connecting, so you might want to temporarily just turn those off for a moment, try to connect and confirm if that's the issue, and then just turn on your antivirus software just as and when you need it, just to make sure that, you know, it is the game that isn't, that is the issue, or it's the antivirus software causing the problem, and just help isolate what that is. Alright folks, and if you need any help getting set up, just feel free to let people know on the Metal Gear Online Discord, which is the CVMGO group.